God and appreciate God for giving us these fathers for giving for these fathers as gifts to this church. Let's lift up our hands and say, Lord, we thank you. All good and perfect gift come from above, from the Father of life, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. These fathers are gifts to this church. Let's lift up our hands to God and say, Lord, thank you. Let's worship Him. Let's appreciate Him. Let's worship God for a day like this. Give Him praise. Give him glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we have worshipped. Father God, we are grateful for the gift of this day. We thank you for the fathers in the house. We thank you for this church. We thank you much more, Jehovah, because you are the father of fathers. We adore you, God. Thank you because you are the everlasting father. The father that is everlasting. The father of all fathers. The father that was. The father that is. The father that shall be. We adore you, Lord. We give you glory, Lord. Thank you for the Father's Day. Thank you for all that you have been doing. Thank you for this wonderful day. Blessed be your name. Bless us mightily as we gather in your presence today. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Say amen loud and clear. Amen. Shall we have our seat? We want to thank God for today. We celebrate the fathers in the house. I want to thank God for our senior pastor and um, um, the man of God that is standing for our senior pastor also. I want to bless God for the pastorate. I want to bless God for the choir, all the people that God has been using in this church to move, to move this church forward. I celebrate God on account of your life. You will not diminish. Say amen loud and clear. Amen. You will continue to increase in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to thank God for our president. He has done wonderfully well and his executive. The Lord will cause you to begin to move from one level of glory to the other. We are proud of you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord bless you. Thank God for my friend, um, Evangelist Emisa. Uh, I, I, I didn't know that you could have been in the meeting today. The Lord bless you. Open your Bible with me to Genesis chapter 2. I'm talking to you this morning in, on understanding the man in God's plan. Understanding the man in God's plan. The understanding of the man in God's agenda will help him to run a functional life. And it is the man that runs a functional life that can run a functional home. Some men are really dead. And therefore the homes they are forming are not functional as well. But I want to thank God on account of our men in this house, our fathers in the house. You are men fulfilling divine agenda. You are fulfilling the eternal plan of God for your life. You carry God's life, the God's kind of life, and that life must be transferred to your home. So we must see you walking and running a functional home. From Genesis chapter 2 that I want to discuss this morning, 
Three things are very vital that I want to show to you in the placement of man in God's agenda that can help him to run a functional home. Number one, God in the priority of God. Man, rather. Man in the priority of God. Number two, want to see man's position in God's agenda. Number three, man's assignment in God's agenda. From this, we'll be able to package how man, especially, uh, our president said the other time, that there are men, but not all men are fathers. Want to see how man can operate as a father and run a functional home and fulfill the divine agenda. In Genesis chapter 2, I read verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The Lord God Jehovah formed man of the dust of the ground. God had the vision of a universe. And God was looking for how he was going to realize and accomplish this vision. The Lord God Jehovah thought that one of the things that is very vital is the foundation of the universe was going to form. So he purposefully, the first thing he did was to form man who was going to be the foundation of that universe. The Bible has told us that if the foundation be destroyed, he said, what can the righteous do? Man was designed by God to be the foundation of the human family. At this time, the woman had not been formed. It was the man first. The woman came out of the man rather than from the earth. Because the woman was designed to rest upon the man. The man was supposed to provide a support to the woman. So he formed man from the dust, but he didn't form woman from the dust. He formed the woman from the man. The woman came out of the man. The first thing he formed was the man, because the man was going to be the foundation of the human family, and which is going to be the foundation for the entire universe. God placed man at the bottom of the entire building of humanity. As man goes in life, so goes the family and the society. If therefore man leaves the home or neglects his responsibility, the house will be shaken because the foundation is sand. It can last. Many families are suffering the trauma of missing foundations because the man that was programmed by God to be the foundation is missing. If the man has cracks and falls in the substructure of his destiny, then the whole building of humanity, the woman, the children, and the entire world will be shaken. And then the future will never be guaranteed. I am telling you, man, that you must try to understand your placement in the divine agenda. You are not just made, you are really made. You are so peculiar in the reasoning of God. As a matter of fact, you had been existing before the world was created. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4 told us that you had been, you had been existing in God before the world began. 
Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. The purpose of man, therefore, is to give foundation to the structure of life. To have functional homes, therefore, there must be strong foundational men. Men who will stand by their wives. Men who will stand with their children. And become a stabilizer to the family. Men whose families will feel secured by the strength of the Father that is a covering to all of them. I pray that as we celebrate the Father's Day today, every father in the house, you will reposition yourself and locate yourself in God's agenda. That you will not abort destiny. You will not frustrate the destinies of those that God has put under your control in life. If men can be can act a strong foundation, they will actually become the man, the men that God has proposed them to be in life. Proverbs chapter thirteen verse twenty two. Solomon was telling us that a good man liveth an inheritance for his children. Children. Solomon was not just talking about wealth. He was not just talking about houses. He was not just talking about cars. Solomon was talk, he was not just talking about land. Solomon was talking about an eternal inheritance. That something that is tangible, something that will be lasting, that the father will hand over to his posterity. That was what Solomon was talking about. If he has handed over land or money or properties, they will perish. But there is something that is more, more precious than land and wealth than, than riches that the father can lay down for the children. But it, it will be difficult. If he's not standing in his foundational position in the family that God has placed him to be. Let me address the second thing, then I will combine them together before we pray. Man's position in God's agenda. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress. And to keep it. I read one more time. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. Man's position. In God's agenda. And the Lord God took the man. And put him. Into the garden of Eden. To dress. And to keep it. Man was not only designed. To be foundation for the human family. He was positioned to fulfill God's purpose in life. God put him, after his creation, put him into the Garden of Eden and giving him an assignment. Eden, that word Eden, comes from the Hebrew word which means delicate, delight, pleasure. The garden is an enclosure. Some, some we are fenced in. God put the man at a spot called Eden. Where there was a connection between the seen and the unseen. In Eden, there was a connection between the seat or the throne room of God. And the placement of man. Eden was a place of divine pleasure. A place where Jehovah comes down regularly to meet with man. The Bible says at the cool of the day, God will come down to meet with man there. And now hear this one. I have just told you that in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, the Bible said the man had been in God before the world began. God created man to control and so, to subdue the entire earth. Eden was not the earth. Eden was a position, a particular spot on the earth. The Almighty God created that place. 
and made that place, which is called Eden, to look like an extension of where he is. Eden was like an incubator. When a child is born, maybe the child is not up to the necessary, the number of months he's supposed to spend on the world. Maybe the child is, so to say, immature. They bring the child out and put him in an incubator for some time. When we get accustomed to the normal temperature that is supposed to live upon the face of the earth. So, Eden was an incubator. The man had been in God and with God. God created Eden and put him in there and said, You are part of me from the beginning. You are partaker of my very life. This earth you are going to be in this incubator. Until you become fully me. Before you can move from this Eden to the entire universe. So, that Eden is a place where the presence of God was totally, completely guaranteed at all times. God is saying to man, I want you to be a custodian, a carrier, and a commander of my presence. That was why we come down to meet with him there. Therefore, positionally, in divine agenda, man was supposed to be a carrier of divine presence. That was why God was angry. When man held onto the thing that can expel divine presence, when he did what God did not ask him to do, and he was expelled away from the garden. And after his expulsion from the garden, the presence of God departed from him. And every calamity and tragedy of life entered the life of man. Now, hear this one, my fathers in the house. I want you to understand in God's agenda that you are supposed to carry, you are supposed to reflect continuous fellowship, continuous communion, continuous oneness with God, which will help you to be able to run a functional life and a functional home. Many men have lost it at this point. They have lost contact with God. The presence of God is not with them. As a matter of fact, like I said last year when I came here, it is the woman that is craving for the presence of God. The woman, the man is indifferent. The man is not bothered about God's presence. It is the woman that is not up and down. Whereas, in God's agenda... The man is supposed to be the one that carries God's presence and radiates it as a covering upon the, upon the woman and the men and the children. The primary purpose of man, therefore, is to be God's presence to the family and the whole of humanity. He is not wired to function productively outside of divine presence. Adam could only fulfill his purpose only if he was in constant touch with divine presence. And as long as he lost the presence, he couldn't function the divine agenda. Romans chapter 1 gives us a very terrible illustration of when a man is disconnected from the presence of God. Romans chapter 1 said he has lost conscience. Such a man is dangerous. You can't predict him. That's why a father, the man who is supposed to be a carrier of divine, divine presence, carry the presence upon the family, becomes a wolf, becomes dangerous, becomes poisonous in the family that was supposed to protect. He abandons his wife, running after other women outside. He abandons his children and begins to stay in the hotel and leave the children with their mother. He's not bothered. He thinks the only thing is to supply the school fees. He thinks the only thing is to pay to send them abroad. That is not it. The man is supposed to carry the presence of God to radiate upon the whole of the family. But he has lost touch with the presence of God. And therefore he cannot run the functional home. The home is dead. The home is not living. 
But listen, this morning, by the grace of God, I can see wonderful fathers in the house. Every father that is connected to this commission, every father that drinks from this altar, every spirit of error that is distressing men from divine agenda, I cause that spirit from the life of every father in the house. None of us shall be a victim. The arrow of the devil will never penetrate any father in the house. You will stand in your position as you will stand in your Eden, carrying and manifesting the presence of God to all the members of the family. So, the man is supposed to be responsible for everything that takes place in the family, bringing the presence of God upon them, bringing the glory of God upon the family, receiving directly from God, and transferring the instruction and the message to the children and the family. I pray that the Almighty God will help all the fathers in the house to be able to fulfill this great assignment, to be able to fulfill this responsibility in the mighty name of Jesus. The presence of God will not depart from you. The glory of God will not leave you alone. That it left like the way it left Adam in the Garden of Eden. Number three, man's assignment. To run a functional home and fulfill the divine agenda, the man must be able to stay in his assignment. Genesis chapter 2. Let me read verses, verses 16 and 17. Verses 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt die. I want you to understand that as at the time these instructions were being passed across to the man, the woman had not been formed. I'm showing you this one so that the man, will know, the fathers in the house will know the awesome responsibilities that rest upon their shoulder. It's my prayer that as I share this together with you, you will not disappoint God. That you will not disappoint the plan and the, the plan and purpose of God. The man, the father, was supposed to be a visionary leader. God showed him all the whole of the garden, gave him a vision in the garden, and gave him the assignment that he must lead every member of his family. Every person, the man and the children, were supposed to be accountable to him. The instruction that God was giving unto him, the woman was not there. He was supposed to guide, he was supposed to lead them. That was why when Satan came and tempted Eve, and the man ate the fruit, and the, and the woman ate the fruit, eventually he brought the fruit to the man, and the man ate. When God came, he didn't call the woman. God knew what happened. He knew that it was Eve that took the fruit from, from the serpent, but he didn't call her. He went to call the man. He said, when he called the man, he said, we are a thou. God is not talking about location. He knew where he was. But God was saying, where are you as far as the responsibilities that I've entrusted into you are concerned? Where are you? What are you doing? Fathers in the house must know that the family, the, your wife and your children, you are responsible for them. You are accountable unto the Almighty God for them. Every of those things God has put in your, in your care, you must be prepared to give a readily relevant account to them. You must give account to them. The, the, the man was supposed to be a visionary leader. He was supposed to be responsible for everything that happens in the family. Number two, the man was supposed to be a teacher. He was supposed to teach the wife. He was supposed to teach the children of all, this, of all the instructions that God has committed to him. He was supposed to be responsible for teaching, for guiding, for transferring the word of God to them and showing them the ways of the Lord. That is the great responsibility that is entrusted upon the man. I was reading the Bible one day and uh, God spoke to Abraham. He said, 
take your son, your only son, and go to Monte Maria and offer him for a burnt offering upon the altar. The man woke up in the morning and gathered wood and put it upon his son. He said, let's go. The boy said, where are we going? He said, we are going to Moriah for a sacrifice. The boy said, why not? Let's go. They were going. I said, we are going the way. The boy said, excuse me. Daddy, he said, what is it? He said, this is fire in my hand, wood on my head. Where is the animal for the burnt offering? Small child. The man has taught him how, how sacrifices are erected. He could just have, 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 have been going as, as a dummy. But he said, Dad, you told me when we left home that we are going to offer sacrifice. I said, yes, that's what we are going to do. This is fire. This is wood. They don't offer sacrifice without an animal. Where is the animal for the burnt offering? A great degree of teaching. The expression of sound teaching at that child. That was why in Genesis chapter 18 verse 19, God said, shall I hide anything from Abraham? That I want to do. Because I know him. That he will instruct his children. He will teach them. No just sending money to them in school. No just paying school fees. He will instruct the teaching. The children. He will teach them. To know the way of the Lord. He will teach them. That is the great point. He is not only supposed to teach the children. He is supposed to teach the wife. And reveal to them the way of the Lord. The father is supposed to be a teacher. Supposed to be a teacher. Number three, the father is supposed to be a cultivator. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. He's supposed to be a cultivator. To cultivate is to make something grow and produce a greater yield. The man is to be a developer and a fruit producer. He must be able to keep the home, form, maintain, and sustain the family. He was put in the garden to dress it, to make sure that the garden is not ugly, to make sure that the garden is not weedy, to make sure that the garden is not... He was to dress the garden. That's the way the father is supposed to do for his family, to dress the family, dress the wife, dress the children, remove weeds, remove cobwebs, Remove encumbrances and make sure that the family is a conducive environment to fulfill divine agenda and divine purpose. Create a conducive environment where God can stay, where God can operate, where the blessings of God can flow in that in the family. That's what the man is supposed to be. I pray as you are hearing me that the grace to be connected to this divine agenda, the grace in God, the wisdom in the most high, the anointing, the understanding, the insight, the, the help, the unction, to be able to connect to this different agenda so that you will not, you will not disappoint destiny and disappoint the Creator. Let that grace fall upon the fathers in the house in the mighty name of Jesus. The man is supposed to, the father is supposed to be a provider. Is supposed to cultivate and provide for the needs in the home. Many fathers thought it's only food he has to provide in the home. In the home. Because the Bible says, He that does not provide for his own household is worse than an infidel and has missed or lost the feed. A lot of very many fathers thought it is only food, it is to buy a car, to buy food in the house. No. The father is supposed to provide for the needs of the wife. One of the greatest needs of the wife is love. Love. Affection. Relationship. Communication. Make sure that the woman did not feel alienated from the house. Give the woman a sense of belonging. Give the woman a sense of he said, he said that I am, I am appreciated. I carry worth. I carry, carry value. I am important. I am peculiar. I am special. I am extraordinary in this home. The man is supposed to provide that environment. So, such that the woman will look at herself and appreciate the dignity of herself. Appreciate the worth of herself. And be proud that I am a woman. And be proud that I am a wife. I am a wife to so, 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 so. The man should create a conducive environment for that in the house. Love and 
love that is endless. I am asking God, God will give you that grace in the mighty name of Jesus. The man is supposed to also provide a conditional environment for the children. I saw what he said. One of the one of the children that came here said, "I am, I am, I am, I, I am." So he mentioned his name. He said, "Because my 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 father is always there. My father is always there." We were sharing together yesterday. There are fathers whose children are in the school. On visiting day, he sends his driver to the school to go and see to go and see the child. Visit the driver. The driver can communicate with the child in school. The driver can, can meet the need of the child. There are certain things that are bothering the child in the school. He can't talk to anybody except the father. He wants the father to know how he's feeling in school. He wants to sit down for five minutes, ten minutes and share his concern and his passion with the father. Then he sends the driver. Sometimes he sends one of his... One... one eh? Just want somebody me. Just, just go there. No, that's not what the child needs. The child needs you. He wants to see them. He's in the body house during holiday. By the time the child come back during holiday, the father has traveled to Canada. By the time he's going back, the father has not returned. During visiting day, it is driver. Any other person with the child see that is not. The father should provide. He's not only providing money. He must provide the moral, the fatherly covering, the fatherly support. There are certain things that he wants to say and discuss together with you. The father must make provision for it. I am praying to God passionately that every father in the house, the grace to meet this great provision of God, the Lord will grant unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. The father is supposed to be a protector. Protector. He was put into the garden to dress and to keep is supposed to protect protect the family. Protect the wife and the children. From the holocaust of life. From demonic invaders. From spies and evil terrorists of life. He's supposed to be a protector. To provide the wife. To provide for the wife. That's why most of the time, the man should be, I read a place in the Bible, it said, Rebecca was barren and had no child. And for a lot of time, the woman was barren and had no child. The Bible says, and Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. And the Lord had him, and Rebecca conceived. Isaac. So it was Isaac that broke through in warfare on behalf of the wife. There are some women that are having some challenges. Maybe delay in childbearing. Tell them, no! Better go and, go, and, go and examine yourself. Examine yourself. Me, I know I have no problem. Examine yourself. It's left for you. It's left. This, yeah, whether, whether we stay together or not, it's left for you. I have no problem. I have no problem. Exact. Uh, you see the woman running from one hospital to the other, traveling to South Africa, traveling to Australia, traveling to America. The man is no bothered. The man cannot even say, come, let me pray for you. Come, let us have some time to wait upon the Lord. Come, let us agree together. No, it is, check, check if I'm tired of you, you are a nuisance. You are a nuisance. You are a liability. I didn't pray to marry a liability, but you are one. I am tired of you. I can't be barren for life. I will find something, don't know. I know what to do. It's only because of Jesus. It's just because, because, you, you, because if, I, if, the, if I'm tired, I will leave the church. It's, a, it's, a, it's because I'm going to church. That's why they can. Take, take time off. Check yourself off. Check yourself off. Check yourself off. He goes out. He's not a father. Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. The man went to his knee. Kayan Tarua Baliga. Jehovah God have mercy. In the Kerua Maliga. Lord God Jehovah have mercy. Krubo Secretary Abba. Maybe at the time she was entreating the Lord, the wife was sleeping. One day came, pregnancy entered. And the lady came and said, I'm going to do tests. They said, I'm pregnant. The man said, praise the Lord. You know why? He has logged it up with God for some months. 
is supposed to be a protector for the wife. He's supposed to carry the family before God in warfare. He's supposed to settle issues in the house. I read of, I heard of, I heard of a pastor that the child was a wayward in school. The man didn't even do anything. He didn't go to school. You know what he did? He called the wife at home and said, your bastard child. I am very sure you didn't give birth for that child to me. I know myself. The news I heard about your son, about your child in school, is not my son. No. Check where you get him from. Oh. Because within some time now, both of you will leave this house. Oh. Both of you will leave this house. Oh. And it's a father. It's not a father, it's a man. It's not a father, it's a man. Instead of hearing that one say, ah, what is the news we are hearing about Jackson in school? Let's have three days to wait upon the Lord. Let's have three days to wait upon the Lord. Satan, who are you concerning our children? Are you mad? I give you a marching order now, Satan. Lose your grip and release him now. You should have agreed together with the wife. That, there is something philosophy they call shifting the burden of proof. He's shifting the burden of proof on the wife. He's not a father. He's a man. I pray that fathers will be answerable. I pray that fathers will be answerable. To their responsibilities. That you will protect your wife. You will protect your guardian. You will protect your children. In the, such that the devil will not have any easy access. Into your family. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Let me round off. My time is off. Let me say this one to you. It is when the father. Plays his role. That he fulfills the divine agenda. Along the functional home. I read my Bible. Uh, one day God called Adam. He said, I have created all of these things that I have created. Come and check them one by one and see what name you give to them. Hey, Adam came and said, this one is mango. This one is guava. That one is tilapia. This one is antelope. This one is grass cutter. And as he was saying, God was nodding his head. God said, good, good. Good, good. You know the end of the story. Whatsoever every name Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Do you know why? Name in Hebrew is very vital. Uh, some people become satanic because of who gave them name. You know one? The person that name you owns you. The person that names you, claims you. God did no name create. He only gave name to Adam. Even the woman, God didn't give her name. It was Adam that gave her name. This is bone of my bone. And flesh of my flesh. She shall be called this. You know why? That is why when a woman marries, she leaves her original name to take the name of the husband. Because the person that names you have you. The person that names you claims you. He gave name to the, to the man, so he claims, he claims the man. That was why when Jesus was coming, God did not give allowance to Mary and Joseph to give him name. Are you hearing me? Before he said, Thou shalt conceive and give birth to a son. Thou shalt call his name Jesus. It is me that have his name because I owe him. That's why he is the father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He claims him. He didn't allow Mary and Joseph to say, It's just it's Jesus. They will have claimed him. That's why when they saw him in the temple, they said, Oh boy, what's wrong with you? Three days we'll be looking for you. What have you been doing? He said, how is it that you are looking for me? Must you not know that I must be about my father's business? You can't claim me that is a father that claims me. I must be about his business. So listen, everybody. When you give back to your children, you give them name. You claim them. So if that son turns to be a bastard in your language, it's you. 
So if it's a bastard, you did it. Can't you? Logic is simply elementary logic. You can infer, therefore, if it's a bastard, you don't need somebody to interpret it for you. You are a bastard. <laughs> you gave him name. You claim him. Accept responsibility for him. If Satan crept him at any time, know how to word of Satan. Your wife, you gave her name. She removed her name to accept your name. You are responsible. If your wife therefore turned to become a harlot, congratulations. If you now discover that your wife is a witch, after you have married her, sorry you, <coughs> it's your own. <laughs> For you now to abandon her, and go to remarry another one, and marry another one, throw him in London, and begin to treat this one anyhow, ah, you didn't fear God. You didn't know that you are accountable to someone. You didn't send yourself here. He sent you here. You will report to him, sir. Payday is coming. Everybody rise to your feet. I'd like you to just pray one prayer. I'm sorry for my time. Just pray one prayer this morning as I just, as I just listen to go. Men in the house, I want you to pray passionately. This is a great day. It's a special day. It's not an ordinary day. I like men in the house. You will lift and after as the men are praying. Women, you don't need to pray for yourself this morning. You will pray for your husband who is a father. Because if he misses it, you can't get it right. If he has lost bearing, you are finished. If he is not on track, you can't get it. So women, you will pray for your husband. Singles, not yet married, you will pray for your tomorrow. Children, pray for your fathers. May you not have disgraceful fathers. Unnecessary. There are fathers that are disgraceful. Their children are ashamed to be identified with them. They didn't carry honor that can make their children to be proud of them in the public. May you not have fathers like that. Amen. So, children, pray for your fathers. Singles, pray for the husband. You are going to marry tomorrow. Fathers, it's your season. It's your day. Oh, God, help me to fulfill divine assignment. Help me never to lose bearing with divine agenda. I am here on a mission. I am here on an assignment. Thou, God of all ages, I promise today, today is Father's Day, I will not disappoint you. Thou God who commissioned me and sent me here, hey, I, I, will, I will stand in my position to carry your presence. I will stand in my place as the head. I will carry out the assignment and the commission that you have placed to my hand. Oh God, help me never to disappoint you. Help me never to abandon both purpose. Help me never to frustrate divine agenda. Help me to stand in, stand in your agenda. Help me to stand in your purpose and fulfill your cancer for my life. Woman, step forth your hand and begin to pray for your husband. Oh God, help my husband. Help him to be able to stand in the place of divine assignment. Help him to stand in purpose. Help him never to disappoint you. Help him never to disappoint destiny. Children, pray for your fathers. Pray for your fathers. Pray for your fathers. Pray for your fathers. Father. Singles, pray for the man you are supposed to marry. Ladies, pray for the man you are supposed to marry. Oh God, the man that I am supposed to marry. Help him to stand in divine agenda. Help him to stand in divine purpose. Help him to stand in the program of God. Come on, everybody open your mouth and begin to pray to God. Cry unto God like that from the depth of your heart.
In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want fathers in the house, place your right hand upon your forehead and use your left hand to hold your wife. Fathers in the house, place your right hand upon your forehead, use your left hand to hold your wife. If your spouse is not here, place your two hands upon your forehead. You are single, you are not yet married, you must not miss it at the bus stop of getting married. Bless your two hands upon your head. Children, bless your two hands upon your head. Your parents must not miss it in the journey of life. God is a God of principle, is a God of plan, is a God of purpose. You must discover purpose to accomplish destiny. You must not lose bearing with purpose. He won't do anything accidentally. He has a design, he has a package, he has a way. Bible call it the way of the Lord. Come on. Jehovah God, I pray today. It is the Father's Day. Upon the altar of the Asokoro Four Square Gospel Church, the Assembly of His Excellency, I stand. I draw from the unction of every man of God who has ever stood upon this altar. I travel into the realm of the Spirit. I draw grace from them one by one. Every man of God who by calling has stood upon this ground and they have dropped their sweat upon this altar. I travel to them wherever they are one by one. I connect grace and strength and unction from them. And I place upon my shoulder. I step forth my hand unto you. Every father in the house, I command grace from the God of all grace. I command unction. I command supernatural empowerment. I command the help of the Holy Spirit. I command baptism with supernatural wisdom. I command anointing for divine direction. I command discretion in the journey of life. I command revelation and inspiration. I command the help of the Almighty God. For every father in the house, in the name of the resurrected Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the place of divine agenda, in the place of divine purpose, in the place of divine calling, in the eternal plan of God for you before the world began, if your amen is allowed there, you will not miss it. In the name of Jesus! be seen to be devoid of life. Every home that is not functional. Every home where there are crises. Every home where there are discord, disagreement. Every home that is hostile for the Almighty God to stay. Every home that is frustrating and disgusting. Every home that is like thorns. Every home that is carrying sorrow and bitterness. Every home where divine agenda has been missed. Every home where divine, where divine purpose has been abandoned. I pray this morning. In the name of the resurrected justice of Nazareth. There shall be divine intervention in the name of Jesus. I connect fathers in the house this morning. I trace your journey back. Back to divine purpose. I reconnect you to divine agenda. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That who the most high has created you to be. I command. That you will fall into place with it accurately today. In the name of Jesus. Every satanic diversion and perversion. At your at the mandate of God for your life. Every perversion and diversion of Satan and the host of the kingdom of darkness against your mission of all defense of the earth today. I frustrate in the name of Jesus. God will help every father in the house. You will not be a disgrace to God. You will not be a disappointment to divine agenda. Your wife shall be proud of you. Your children shall be proud of you. The program and the plan of God for you, you will fulfill it. You will not frustrate destiny. 
You will not frustrate divine plan. You will not frustrate divine purpose. The grace of God will rest upon your life. Every man that is supposed to be a father in the house and is still a man by the absence of the blessing of the fruit of the womb. There is no person in your home that can say daddy. There is no person in your house that can say daddy. Come and, come and carry me to school. As we stand this morning, rainbow sandalia. Makuli basandalia bakuri bokundeli makuria. Renda kariba sandalia. Behua bakayanda li mamuri bo soprelia babunkeli makuri bakandalia. Lembo senteri bakuria babunkaria babunteli bakuri bo supreli bakuri bakandalia. Maria bakunde li mamuria bakundeli bakari bo supreli babunkeli makuri bokundeli bakuri bakandari bakuri bokunda. Every embargo upon your marriage. That is causing a delay or a suspension of the blessing of the foot of the womb. This day, this day, this day, this day, this day, Manda Karua, the 16th day of the month of June, year 2013, every embargo placed upon the womb of your wife, every embargo placed upon your spam count, every embargo placed upon your marriage, every embargo that is denying you the real blessing of the foot of the womb that can make you to become a registered certificated father. I command, if your amen can be the loudest today, embargoes are lifted. In the name of Jesus! I command every closed womb to be open. 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 By this time next year, yourself and your wife, you will come to the Father's Day with your own child. By this time next year, you will appear in the Father's Day with your own child. By the word of prophecy, prophecy cannot die. Prophecy shall live. By this time next year, you shall appear at the Father's Day of this world with your own child. Every thought upon any father that cannot make you to be called a father in word and in deed, I command the thought to be terminated now in the name of Jesus. I release the blessing of fathers upon the fathers in the house. The blessing of fathers rest upon you. You shall be fathers in the program of God. You shall be fathers in your home. You shall be fathers outside. You shall be fathers in your family. So shall it be. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. I brought two books. Two books. They are with the president there. One of them is both a prayer and a devotional book. This one is Prayer Dynamite. 52 Awesome Possibilities of Prayer. It is both a devotional and a prayer manual. You use it for there are explosive, mind-blowing, supernatural revelations. That when you contact one, it's enough. Every termination of a destruction is rooted in an instruction. There are instructions here that will blow out every destruction of your life. This is 1,200 naira. This is come up either. Anyone that is tired of where you are, and you want to elevate your life and your destiny life, this one is for you. I brought just 10, 10, 10, 10 copies. Maybe you can get one from the chairman. By the time you are spending the next Father's Day, you shall be a million times greater and better than where you are.
bless you as